the thing that made me so delighted to do this because I finally got to explain, you know, when Peter Venkman goes into Dana Barrett's apartment and he's using the Bacharach uh, s- sniffer, w- w- what is that doing? What is different between that and a PKE meter? Why is he using that to take samples and not bringing a PKE meter to take samples? Um, and, and getting to finally explain tiny mundane things like that that's where i started to like get a twinkle in my eye and be like oh well because who have moved from uh marvel agents of shield and all this other great stuff that you're involved with you did a book i did ectomobiles i did Uh, so a hain style guide to the Ectomobile, uh, and I guess if they if, if it was you naming it, it'd be Haynes Guide to the Ectomobile, Bracket, and several other things <laughs> that are not Ectomobiles, <laughs> but are related to the movie, and we look at them as well. So what ended up happening was I had been talking with Eric at Ghost Core about um, wanting to do one of those, um, like a visual dictionary kind of thing, or, or, or building, building out like a world Bible, so to speak, so that everybody had that yeah. reference tome that could sit on their shelf that was... You know, like, oh, what was that in that episode? Oh, I'll just pull that off. And, oh, there we go. I can look it up right then and there. And Eric kind of, as he does, kind of like, you know, stroked his chin. was like, hmm, yeah, okay. Let me get back to you on that. Um, and then uh, one of the publishing people at Sony had reached out to me. And, and uh, she said, you know, we're working with Insight on this book. That's one of those Hanes guides for the, for the Ectomobile. Uh, and we want to put you up for it. Are you interested? I was like, Oh my God. Yes, of course I I would be interested. So, um, so they put me up for it and started sort of spitballing some ideas. And what became clear was that just the car, just the first initial 1959 caddy from the original film wouldn't be enough to fill the entire book. And I said, well, what if we make this like a, like the guide that all of the franchises, you know, the franchise rights alone will make us rich beyond our wildest dreams. What if when you become a franchisee, this is your operations manual that you're handed, you know, uh, that, that corporate office sends out to you. That's like, here's how you need to press your collars. Here's how you need to operate your proton packs. Here's how often you need to clean out your containment units, uh, things of that nature. And they were kind of intrigued by that. And they're like, okay, yeah, let's do that. I mean, let's, Let's still keep it within. We want the car to be the main focus. We want this to be the Ectomobile manual, but you know we can add in some of the gear because it would make a lot of sense. If you're going out on a call, you would need certain gear inside the car. So let's make sure that the car is always the fulcrum point for everything here. And uh, you know what, basically whatever they can fit in the car. Now that I think about it, I kind of want to buy your book and go find the ones they made for the original caddies. <laughs> which, um, yeah, which don't exist. That was the hardest part, too. No? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you had this idea for the franchise thing. It didn't quite go that way, but they still allowed it to be ectomobiles. Right. Uh, plural. Yeah. And some of the gear that would... So it became not just the mechanics of the car. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but not just the mechanics of the car but some of the gear that was standard to it as well. Right, yeah, yeah. And is that about right? Yeah, so it became, which is tough because in in our universe, in the real world, it's easy because it's Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, and Ghostbusters Answer the Call. We know that they're sequel movies, and that's why they had different equipment and different cars. But right. if you look at it when it's all in the same universe, oh, but how, do we, how do we handle <laughs> this? Because why yeah. would they... So it became clear to sort of do like, well, that was the Mark one of the car. And then this was the Mark two of the car. And then, um, with, with answer the call, we just sort of, it's in the same universe. It's just designed by a different person. So it becomes the Holtzman Mark one, you know, and that's, yeah. that's kind of how it's explained. You've stuck to the movies, but you kind of in a couple of places touch out to, like the video game and the, the, yeah. the cartoons. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, because the which cartoons, is, which is I'm amazed by like the, the video game I can kind of see to a point, the cartoon, I'd be like, why? Yeah. Well, like, that is so many and they're nonsensical. It's like, 
<laughs> yeah. Today, the proton pack is made out of rubber and floats <laughs> because that's what fits the story. Yeah, and and there's uh, a device underneath the Ecto that turns it into a raft that allows it to float. And you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. That's solid steel. <laughs> So there is a comment from Egon about a particular vehicle in the Holtzman universe, which is a lot of fun, that also happens to be a nod to real Ghostbusters. So I combined three universes with one comment <laughs> and and I put it in there and I was like, oh, man, I'm so pleased with myself. I'm just I'm I'm so clever. Look at me. And it was one of those things that I had to keep fighting for because they're like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't, why is he commenting on it? Why does he say that a motorcycle with a gyrocopter seems like a good idea? And I was like, oh, guys, no, no, the diehard fans are going to love this. Just please keep it in there. <laughs> so none of this is canon, but but it's rather kind of just a fun, loosely knit collection of yeah, universes. Yeah, I mean, it's it's canon in the sense that it has the Ghost Core stamp of approval and, and has gone through them. Um, and and I, I was very... The details are canon. Yeah, the details the, and the The equipment. relationship of the, of the different, what do we want to call them, eras or whatever, is not canon. Is not, yeah. I mean, and, and the interactions are few and far between. Uh, that, yeah. that Egon one is probably one of the few that, that we actually did. But because it also gets kind of murky. Like, why am I hearing from Egon about Holtzman's Ectomobile? He hasn't seen it yet that we've seen. But in, yeah. the, in the conceit of this manual, he has because he commissioned it. You know, he's, he's approved it from the corporate offices somewhere and, and has, yeah. you know, signed off on it. So, But hey, uh, 101's out, so, you know. And now, yeah, exactly. And 101, they're still, they're kind of treading that line at uh, IDW too, where it's like, it's yeah. kind of canon, but it's not kind of canon. There. Yeah. Details on the, the stock caddies is kind of limited to begin with. You're telling me you had, didn't even have any good like just for the base mechanicals, you didn't even have any real world. Yeah. Okay. It, so, so how hard is it then to, it sounds like, like I would have assumed like that's the easy part. So here's how the real world one works. <laughs> this is, this is how a caddy is and all caddies are. And now we'll talk about the <laughs> fictional stuff. You didn't even have much of a leg up on the real world stuff. No. And that's, that's where all of the, the leg work that all of the fans out there have done, like on GB fans and, and the Ectomobile forums, uh, it, it, everybody has done a lot of parts identification in order to build the replicas. So that, that helped quite a bit and all of those years of hard work really paid off and you'll see the, the names and the special thanks in the back of the book are like a mile long and I know I left probably a hundred people out, which is really sad and I apologize to every single one of those hundred people. Um, but it, it, you know, that, that was the good news because what ended up happening was, you know, these, these chassis that, um, that, that Cadillac designed, they would sell off to places like Miller Meteor and they yeah. would build their coaches on top of it. So a real, like an, a service manual never really existed because there was never an owner's manual for it in the first place. So that was part one of, I went scouring uh, Amazon and libraries and I had to go find the owner's, not even the owner's manual, but like the operations manual just for the bare chassis that they were selling. So I found that and I found it for the exact make for the for the exact uh, engine make and model that the uh, 59 caddy that we all know and love is. Uh, so I had that. And then luckily for me, it also included um, all of the operations for the dashboard and it had uh, instructions on things like tire pressure and oil pressure. And so all of those things in the book are real. All of the all of the details that I've put into you know, what you should keep your tire pressure at, um, how often you should change the engine oil, uh, what weight engine oil you should be using. That's all, God help me, that's all real. So if you want to put this in your glove box, uh, <laughs> by all means, go ahead. We do have like a um, best styles and practices for using the no ghost logo. So it, it sort of reads like that style guide that you were talking about where it's like, uh, right. And, and, and we phrase it in a way that here's how you can spot knockoff merchandise because the Moogly doesn't have <laughs> the correct uh, details in his face and he doesn't have the black background underneath. And 
the rotation, things like that. Um, we also talk about caution striping because I know that it is a point of contention for a lot of people. So I, <laughs> I, I put a lot of fun into that where it's like, look, guys, caution striping serves a purpose. We know it looks really cool and really scientific when you're driving down the street, but there is a certain amount of taste that you have to keep in mind when you're <laughs> using this stuff too. Um, the angle, the angle of the stripes is exactly 43 <laughs> degrees. Yeah. The, well, I mean, and the good news, you know, we're, we measured out the caution striping on the Ecto-1A, so you know how high that was and how high off the car that was and, and things like that. That's in the, the book. But then we also say, like, but that's that's the bottom. That's that's all the caution striping that you need. Put that on your car, put that on your trap, and then you're done. You don't need caution striping everywhere else. We do have a, a guide to uniforms, and it does call out all of our great franchises out there that have variations on the uniforms, different colors on the uniforms. We explain why they wear the charcoal uniforms in Ghostbusters 2. Again, it was one of those things where I'm like, oh my God, I get to explain this? Awesome. So it's you, Mark Sumarak, and then speaking of the illustrations, uh, shout out to Ian... Ian Moores, yeah. Who, Ian Moores. Who is an actual Haynes illustrator. He's the guy who actually does real engineering drawings for all of these cars. So that was... Uh, uh, I mean, okay. that was a treat, man. That was a hoot to be working with him. And he'd be like, well, I put a magnet there. And I'm like, yeah, but there's the problem is there's a wall there. And he'd go, oh, hold on. Let me stack it. And he would like put a wall there and he would stack the magnet. And it was, oh, it was just so much fun. Yeah, just uh, talk a little bit about, because I think he's also going to be a big part of the book is the, the, the sounds like the oh, illustrations yeah. are. Yeah. He's, he's a huge part of it because yeah, I mean, he, he treated just as we do in the book, he treated everything as if it was real. So um, you know, the, I was just talking about the trap because we talk about the cartridge system for the trap, how there's a cradle and then there's this cartridge that comes out into the containment unit. Um, and so he and I kind of went back and forth about how, you know, w what the pedal does, how the trap works. Cause he had the text. So he knew what we were talking about in terms of the laser containment grid and how it's pressurizing the ghost with positive energy and, and how it's containing the ghost. So it has to have a generator. It has to have some sort of, he put a, a superconducting magnet in there. Um, and, and he was thinking through things as if he was kind of, you know, like Ron Cobb used to do for aliens, you know, if, if everything, right. if you see something, it has to have a purpose. And so it's not just a bunch of gack and garbledy gook that's, that's just there to look cool. Everything has been thought out. So, you know, when he, when you do a cross section of a cyclotron, uh, he's looking at a Hadron collider and he's going, Oh, I see. So you've got the, the magnet on the outside. You've got the hydrogen being delivered into the middle from here. Uh, I, I got it. I can, I can do this. And then he draws it out and it's just, it's incredible. It's so cool. Um, and then because he's a technical il illustrator too, the the containment unit process that I told you about, he has these six steps with, you know, the hand and the arrows. And it says, you know, uh, upon completion of uh, your delivery, uh, make sure that you reset the lever to the upright position. And it's, it's just like an airplane manual. When you get in and you've got the safety manual for the airplane, you see the hand with the red arrow pointing up and the lever is now in the upright position. So official title is... The Ghostbusters Ectomobile Owner's Workshop Manual, which Amazon has shortened to Ghostbusters Ectomobile. So <laughs> if you can't find it on Amazon, that's what you're searching for. But uh, And it's by Insight, but it does have the Hanes branding. By on it. Insight, it has the Hanes branding on it. If you are in the UK, you can actually buy it from Hanes proper, which is really cool. <laughs> Oh,